Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at a highlight video from the epic finale of our 2025 CAD vs. CAD speed modeling tournament, the Spring Open. Now, although this tournament is over, we are currently accepting free registration and qualification for our next tournament, the 2025 Variety CAD tournament. You can enter using any 3D CAD system. So if you're out there and you're a 3D CAD wizard, or if you know a 3D CAD wizard, be sure to visit us at tutaltobycom slash variety, and you can sign up today for free and try to qualify for that tournament. Now, getting into today's highlight video, we got to see a really exciting model. It was our very first tier six model in the tournament. It was a multi-body model. It had multiple materials. It had in-context features, all kinds of good stuff for our wizards to attempt to challenge their skills. And it was such a fun model that I took a copy of that challenge and dropped it on our website, tutaltoby.com. And that model is currently free for anyone with a free account. So if you visit us at tutaltoby.com and you search for this model here, 250601, you can attempt to model it yourself. You can see what kind of challenges you run into, and then you can come back and see how our two wizards did in the tournament. You can also see here that there's some videos on the website of people who tried to speed run this challenge. They posted their video of their speed run. And one user here, Casca, even did it in under six minutes, which is super impressive. And you will understand once you take a look at this challenge. So I hope you guys enjoy this highlight video, this epic battle between Ricardo, Jean, and Atze. And let's see how they do with this tier six multi-body challenge. I hope that gave everybody a chance to kind of relax a little bit, no. slow down a little bit, rethink everything, because now... Now it's time to lock in. It is time to lock in. The time for talk is over. The time for action is now. Yes. Guys, this could be it. If Ricardo Jean can lock down this point, we're going to have ourselves a 2025 Spring Open champion. But he is up against one of the toughest competitors in the tournament in Atze. And Atze could easily tie it up on this one, and then we'll go to a third match. Yeah. Let's see what happens here in this next championship CAD vs. CAD battle between Ricardo Jean from Italy running <laughs> SolidWorks and Atze from Macedonia running SolidWorks. Yes. This championship CAD vs. CAD battle begins in three, three. Two, two, one, one go. go! What is the mass of this multi-body part or assembly in XXXX grams with a pretty lenient tolerance? So we can see here that this is a tier six challenge. This is called a bath caddy. It's kind of like one of those Ikea shelves with the tubing. Let's flip over to the battle and see how our runners handle this. We yeah. see on the left that Ricardo Jean has started out by mapping out that kind of overall shape where Atze has decided to take a moment and kind of come up with a game plan. Yeah. I like both of these approaches. I think both of these approaches are valid. It's been a while since we've had an assembly. Uh, we've, it's been a while since we've had an assembly yeah. uh, model. Yeah. Yep. It I could be an assembly, could be multi body. We'll see how these runners decide to handle this one. This is going to be interesting. No yeah. matter what happens, it's going to be interesting. Yes, indeed. So it looks like on the left, we've got uh, we've got Ricardo coming in with uh, potentially first blood there. Looks like maybe he's deciding to kind of uh, model this thing up using. I'm not sure what he's using there, actually. I looked away for a second. Boom. Modeling up there using uh, the... It, he looks like he did an extrude and maybe added some fillets to that extrusion. And we see here on the right, we've got Atze, who is constructing some geometry here for the overall shape or one half of the shape, maybe. Mm. This is an interesting one, guys. This is one of these models, you know, where the customer... Oh, I'd say jumping into 3D Sketcher there. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, oh, somebody's a pro. Yeah. Wow. We like seeing that. Yeah, this is one of these models where the drawing, you know, the and a lot of times this happens, the drawing you get from the customer gives you the overall dimensions. So we've got the overall width of this thing. But if you think about it, when you do a sweep, particularly when you do a sweep with a 3D Sketch, it's probably going to be a lot easier to work with the center line dimensions. Well, what do you do if the customer gives you the overall dimensions and you want to work with the center line dimensions? You know, that's why you tune into Too Tall Toby. That's why you do the practice models so that you can kind of figure out these scenarios and you'll be ready for them. Yeah. 
So it looks like Ricardo Jean decided to create the geometry of the shelf first, and now he's going back through and creating the geometry for that tube. The tube has 25 millimeter OD, 20 millimeter ID, and Ricardo Jean is getting in there and using the, once again, using the, uh, looks like the shift command to get that kind of max dimension there. Very nice. Yeah, this is, this is a weird part. A lot, a lot of moving, not moving, but like a lot of, a lot of different things are happening in this part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There is a lot going on here with this uh, with this model. We were mean for this final tournament models. <laughs> we were really mean. <laughs> we're trying to make sure that we keep these guys on their toes. Yeah. This is a tier six challenge. A lot of you guys have been asking, you know, what can we do? What uh, what can we do with a tier six challenge? You know, what's a tier six challenge going to look like? What are the different higher level tier challenges look like? So now we're starting to see what they look like. So Ricardo Jean getting in there, really focusing on that shelf to begin with, where Atze decided to focus more on the tubing. I think for me, I would probably have focused on the tubing first as well. Um, but, you know, I'm not in the championship. Ricardo Jean is in the championship. So we're going to let him work through this and, and uh, you know, figure out what ends up working for him. So making that shelf, going through, adding those fillets to the outside of the shelf, and then adding the shell to that shelf. And no. boom. It looks like Atze is working on the uh, actual tube part. And where Atze, yeah, looks to be working on the tubes on the right there. So trying to go through and model up that tubing. Remember, if you want to see the drawing, you could roll back the video, take a screen capture, then roll forward again back to live so you can look at the drawing. Or you could even open YouTube in a second screen or even on a second device. Yeah. And then you could uh, just bring up the drawing and pause it there so that you can kind of keep an eye on what's happening. Looks like Ricardo Jean opting to model this shelf entirely as a part. I wonder if he's planning on maybe jumping into assembly mode when it comes time to working on the tubes. You can certainly do this as a multi-body. You could certainly do it as an assembly. You know, whatever works for the runners. And maybe they could even come up with their own solution to, yeah. uh, you know, to decide how to put this thing together. We do, on Two Tall Toby during the tournaments, we do try to create the challenges in a way that, you know, you, you, you're... When you've got multiple components that work together, there are some relationships and dimensions in those components that are, you know, often related to one another. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times it is better to design the parts together, but certainly there are, uh, we've seen plenty of runners use different types of workarounds to kind of uh, decide what ends up being the fastest way to come up with the mass. It looks like Ricardo Jean here has opted to make that as a multi-body pattern. And like we said earlier, you know, Ricardo Jean looks like he focused on creating the shelf first, where Atze decided to focus on making the tube first. And yeah. so now we see Atze going through and creating the geometry for the shelf. Yeah. In the chat, we see Jim Yu says, really good model. Scott makes the thing, says, what's the highest tier? Highest tier is 15. Matab says seven until now. Yep, seven so far. Seven's the only ones we've released so far. Uh, let's see here. Rock crawler's got to go. And uh, Aaron C saying, love seeing these guys do different approaches. I have no idea who's ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Shane is here in the chat. Shane Howe says, hey, made it. Yes. Great to see you. Paper prints are always my friend. Yeah. Scott makes a thing. Says, tier 15. And Shane says, wish this was a best of five. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're definitely considering uh, adding that into a future tournament, having a best of five when we get to the finals. Cool. It, it always feels like it ends too soon. Yeah. And L is here. L Meseroy. Mesery. Welcome, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Wow. So Atze creating that kind of uh, almost like a quarter of the shelf there and then going through and, and uh, hogging out that area where the tube clearance needs to be you know a lot of times when you manufacture parts like this you need to put clearance between the parts and so we tried to include that on this two tall toby model i do love how all these parts like realistically could have a usage like in real life we try i think that's one of the coolest parts of two tall toby yeah we try but sometimes in the lower tiers you have to kind of keep it a little bit basic but yeah. as we get up to the higher tiers we try to we try to create some parts that are that are real parts yeah. Shane House says, can this one be on your next Model Monday, please? Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to do a series where we go through and solve some of these tournament challenges, Shane. So be on the lookout for that, too. You call it like the uh, the Toby method for solving yeah. tournament uh, tournament models. I like that. So it looks like maybe Ricardo Jean hitting a little bit of a snagging point here when it comes to creating the tubes. This is interesting. It looks like uh, I'd say he really came into this thing with a plan. 
And uh, after, you know, establishing that plan, now he's going through and, and executing and was able to not only create the tubes, but was able to create those shelves pretty quickly using the tubes as a reference. Yeah. So. Wow, wow, wow. I, it's interesting, too, that both of our runners decided to pattern that body using move copy body rather than linear pattern. I would have done it with linear pattern and then selected the option to pattern bodies. Yeah. But both of our runners did it using move copy body. So it just goes to show that, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways to, uh, you know, to to do things in in 3D CAD. And uh, wow, I'd say now looking like he's got wow. the geometry for all of the shelves and for the tubes. Looks like he's going to be going in and adding some um, adding some geometry here. Uh, and looks like he may be coming in with an answer. So we're going to keep an eye on the chat. So Atse coming in with an answer here. 9292 grams. That is not correct, Atse. Ooh. That is not correct. So Atse taking his first strike. Now, of course, runners can get it wrong one time and then can... Um, uh, runners can get it wrong one time and then can, can continue trying to look at their model, trying to look at the drawing and trying to figure out maybe what they missed or what dimension they got wrong or what they did wrong. Yeah. Um, so I'd say does have this opportunity now to go through and, and to attempt to kind of fix things up here. And uh, Ricardo speeding up now, realizing like, oh my goodness, look at him. <laughs> Ricardo really took it into overdrive yeah. there. And I'd say revising his answer and revising his answer to nine two seven nine grams and i'm sorry i'd say but that is not correct with intolerance that is not correct with intolerance so what this means is that now now that two answers have been given by one of our runners now we must implement per the rules the clock of doom so the Clock of Doom comes out here now. The Clock of Doom is being applied to Ricardo. What this means is Ricardo has five minutes to come up with his answer. And uh, Ricardo has five minutes to come up with his answer. And as he's attempting to come up with his answer, he's going to... Uh, oh, I see. Uh, sorry. Atze is saying the answer. his answer was actually 9280. Still not within tolerance, Atze. Uh, so just to be clear on that. Ricardo Jean coming in with his answer. 9312 grams. And Connor, that is not correct. Ooh. That is not correct either. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. What's going to happen here? What is happening? So Ricardo Jean now needs to go through and try to figure out he's answered wrong one time. He's got four minutes and 18 seconds to either answer again wrong or answer again correctly. Yeah. So... Wow, wow, wow. The chat is rolling in here. This is crazy. Oh, my goodness. This hasn't happened since, like, what was that, two tournaments ago? This is this is the finals, baby. This is what we do in the finals. We torture these guys. We torture these runners. And so now we see that our runners are, are both kind of standing by. We see that Ase is going through, is maybe trying to solve his, trying to figure out maybe what went wrong. Yeah. We see that uh, Ricardo Jean is going through, trying to solve his. The Clock of Doom is up and running. It is brutal. It is very large on the screen yeah. uh, to let people know that the Clock of Doom is here. Uh, everybody in the chat is, is trying to give advice here. Uh, remember, uh, uh, we see here that uh, it looks like at, at first I thought maybe someone in the chat tried to help Ricardo Jean, and I was going to say, don't help. But then I realized that's Ricardo Jean in the chat trying to help <laughs> Ricardo Jean in the chat. So I don't know if that counts. Uh, Anse saying that he thinks he's got it now. He's figured out maybe what he was missing from that. Yep, that was brutal. And uh, three minutes and 10 seconds left during the clock of doom here. It is all up to Ricardo Jean. The championship is on the line. Yeah. If he can answer this correctly, and he's only got one pull, if he can answer this correctly, he will be officially the champion of this 2025 World Champ or SPO Spring Open Tournament. Yeah. And uh, if not, then we're going to go to a third battle. Yeah. Wow, what more could we ask for here in these finals? No, John G says, no pressure. Not. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Whatever has happened between the two of these runners has had to have been super small because I'll be quite honest with you, I have no idea what is not there. Yeah, uh, Ricar Ricardo Jean kind of going through, double checking some of his dimensions, trying to figure out uh, what what he has wrong on this. Yeah. Uh, this answer has a a uh, relatively lax uh, tolerance of plus or minus seven grams, seven zero grams. Yeah. So a relatively lax tolerance here, uh, but the answers that have come in so far have not been within that tolerance. 
uh, very close here from our runners uh, as far as like their original answers. We see that Atze came in with like 90, 92, 92, 92, 80, and then uh, Ricardo came in with 93, 12. So all these answers are, are pretty close to one another. Um, but we've got one minute and 45 seconds. Ricardo, Gene is bringing up Calculator now. The ominous calculator <laughs> app. Oh bring, my God. Bringing up the calculator app to make <laughs> sure. <old> school. <laughs> he is going for it. He's checking, double checking. You know, he's made some changes, so we may see a new answer from him. Um, I think he's just trying to figure this all out. Uh, opening calculator, making Aaron C. proud. Time for the Jeopardy song. Yeah. When's the uh, pen and paper in the calculator platform or uh, system? <laughs> challenge. Com yeah, coming yeah. on the uh, channel. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, the TI-84 challenge. Yeah, just look at this part and tell us what the mass is of this part. Oops. Okay, we saw him bring it up. Is he going to commit? That's the question. We got one minute left here. I'm sitting on the edge of my one seat. One minute for our... For everything, for all of, all of the everything. Let's see drum rolls. This is crazy. He's gonna wait until five seconds. You gotta be careful though with that, right, John G? Because the the lag, the lag could end yeah. up costing you. You know, I would say wait until maybe like thirty seconds. I wouldn't go too much lower than that. Oh my gosh, I got the who wants to be a millionaire. Okay, Ricardo Gene coming in with an answer. Nine, two, seven, four grams. Nine, two, seven, five grams. And guys, we all win because we're going to a third battle oh here. Oh my gosh. And Atse, you said you thought you had it. I'm going to give Atse a chance to answer here. Atse coming into the chat. Nine, two, five, five grams. And that is correct within oh tolerance. Gosh. So the correct answer for that one was nine, two, five, zero, plus or minus seven grams. Atse coming in with nine, two, five, five at the end would have been correct. So that that is brutal. Uh, that would have earned him the point, but in this case, there's going to be no point. This is what we call a push. And so we are going to move on to our next challenge. We're not going to take too long here in between because the Wheel of Fate only has one number on it. Yeah. So we know what the next challenge is going to be. So we are just going to move on here to the next challenge. And uh, wow, guys. That was crazy. That was awesome. Yeah. Congratulations to all of us. Because yeah. we all win because we get to see another battle between these two wizards. Yeah. And uh, that is a push. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a pretty fun model. That was our tier six, one of our tier six models in yeah. this challenge. And uh, always fun to see a tier six model there in the challenge. Yeah. And uh, Connor, what did you think about that? Oh, my gosh. I was sitting on the edge of my seat.